Count them, two amazing indie games are being made available for free this week. Both Celeste and Inside are available now until September 5th for zero dollars, zero cents. Translate that into any currency, still zero. We gave Celeste a perfect 10 out of 10, that's masterpiece quality, last year, and I gave Inside also a perfect 10 out of 10 back in 2016. Needless to say, we cannot recommend these games enough, and now they are, once again, completely free. The only catch, if this even counts as one, it does, is that they are free on the Epic Game Store, which has been the center of much debate among gamers and developers ever since it launched earlier this year. Mm -hmm. To recap, James. Yes. Valve's Steam, as we all know, has been pretty much the de facto storefront for digitally distributed PC games from pretty much everybody since Half-Life 2 came Long out live the and king. made everybody want it. And then it's built on that over the years. Epic Games, meanwhile, flush with that fat Fortnite cash, has uh, set up their own storefront to rival Steam, but it's earning, hey, a lot of bonus points with developers and publishers by giving them a much bigger cut of the profits. Epic carves out 12% of a game's sale, while Steam takes 30% back home to Uncle Gabe Newell. Gamers can still buy their games and developers earn more money, so what's the problem? Well, there is a problem. Let me break it down. Uh, there are quite a few points of contention, but by far the biggest of which revolves around purchased exclusivity. So far, 30 titles, which is quite a bit for a little over six months uh, of launch time, are set to launch exclusively or have been purchased exclusively on the Epic Game Store. Among those are Metro Exodus as well as the upcoming Borderlands 3. While exclusivity is never beneficial to the consumer, it's especially egregious in the case of the Epic Game Store because of a lack of platform features. Still notably absent are support forums, an in-game overlay, mod hosting, change logs, and it doesn't help that the library looks like a Pinterest page with no way to sort its offerings. However, progress is is being made on this front. Cloud save functionality was finally added eight months after release, which isn't exactly speedy, but you know, at least it's here. It's hard to argue that the Epic Games Store is anything other than a major boon for indie developers, but that doesn't mean its strategy of buy exclusivity first, add functionality later, isn't detrimental to the consumer. But I hardly think it's as ill-intentioned as evil as the internet would have you believe. Skepticism on the part of the consumer is always healthy, and I'd certainly like to see functionality prioritized over exclusivity moving forward, but even as it stands now, it has its best benefits for developers, namely recouping development costs and helping to break up the Steam monopoly. I don't think anybody is arguing for a monopoly in the PC digital storefront wars, and the Epic Games Store does have its defenders. User Foreman, with the four for the A, nice touch, on Reddit said, quote, I've built a solid library with these free games. I really have a hard time being mad about that, end quote. So we'd like to throw it back to you, our beloved IGN audience. Are weekly free games enough to earn some goodwill for Epic? Do you think Steam needs to change their revenue split policy? And uh, EA and Ubisoft, they've got their own storefronts. Just how many game launchers do you have installed on your PC? I ask you, I ask everyone out there. Five. Uh, let us know five is James's answer. Let us know in the comments below. And for the absolute latest in gaming, stay tuned to IGN, and we'll see you next time on IGN Now.